And what's your name, my friend? That's Bill. Bill. Okay, Bill. And what do you do, Bill? I'm a medical engineer. You're a medical engineer. Are you from England? You're English? I am, yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. The question I'd like to ask you, really, Bill, is do you believe Jesus is God or do you believe Jesus was somebody sent by God? That was one of the questions I had about Christianity, to be honest with you, the, the Holy Trinity and all that is one of the kind of sticking points I had with not quite thinking I was a Christian. I mean... It didn't make sense? No, it didn't, no. So, although you call yourself a Christian, you're not really sure about Jesus, is that right? Is that fair? Yeah, that'd be fair. Okay, fair, okay. What I would suggest is that Jesus is not God. Christianity teaches that Jesus is God, okay? The way it teaches that is it says it's part of a trinity, as you know, probably, okay? Because Christianity says God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. All three are not only um, separate beings, but they're actually part of God, what they call the Godhead, okay? Uh, this doesn't make sense, even from a biblical point of view, I would suggest. What was Jesus teaching? We as Muslims agree that Jesus was 100% correct. Jesus, you see in the Bible, went into the Garden of Gethsemane, Bill, and he put his head on the ground and prayed. It says in the Bible, or oh, he fell on his face and prayed. Who prays like that today? Man. Yes, but which religion prays like Jesus by putting their head on the ground? Um, Muslims. That's right, Muslims, my friend. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the other female followers of Jesus, uh, they used to cover their hair and wear loose clothing. And what I say to people is, if you saw Mary today, hypothetically, and the female followers of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, say here in West London, in the high street, what religion would you think they were? I think they were Muslims. You think they were Muslims? Islam is the word submission to the will of God. A Muslim is a submitter to the will of God. So Jesus is saying that he's a Muslim to the Father. Therefore, he's a Muslim to, to God. The Father just being a word for God in the Bible. Okay, makes sense? It does, yeah. And uh, Jesus never said that uh, I am the Son of God, but in the Bible language, he talked about we're all children of God. And this is what he says in the Bible. Blessed are the peacemakers, they should be called the children of God. Uh, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Clear evidence in the Bible. And also, he in the Bible, he taught us to pray. He should have taught us to pray. Uh, our, uh, Sorry, God's Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's how Christians should pray, if Jesus was the Son of God. But he didn't teach us to pray that in the Bible. Jesus told us to pray, our Father in heaven. That means not only Jesus' Father, but our Father, which means that God is the Father of all human beings, which means that God does not have children, but that's a father-child relationship. That's what he's talking about. Make sense? Makes sense. Okay, fine. Brilliant. Now, this book, the Quran, we believe, contains the word of what the Bible calls the Father, which is Almighty God, come down through the Holy Spirit or Ruhul Quds, collected together by human beings to form the Quran. Okay. Now, as a scientist, I would like to tell you what do you think about this, please, if you don't mind, because you're a medical engineer. The Quran contains, <clears throat> this Quran is an absolutely amazing book. I would say, obviously, you'd say, obviously you'd say that when you're yes. a Muslim, but I'll tell you why. The Quran contains many scientific statements. Okay, embryology, you know what embryology is? Yep. yep, you're a medical physicist, is that right? A medical engineer. Medi you're a medical engineer, so you know what uh, embryology is. Embryology is how, of course, for our audience, it's how a baby is formed inside the womb of its mother. It's described in detail in the Quran. Professor Keith Moore, have you heard of him at all? Uh, I have done, yeah. Brilliant, <laughs> excellent. Many people haven't. Professor Keith Moore, for our audience, is a eminent embryologist, uh, anatomist, by a professor of anatomy at the University of Toronto in Canada. His book on embryology is used all over London, in fact, still today. And, um, um, and he says the statements in the Quran about embryology were not known 100 years ago, let alone known at the time of Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. He doesn't say peace be upon him, but I'm adding peace be upon him as a respect. Uh, so he says that this book must be from God. That's what he says, and that's in the Quran. This, <clears throat> the Quran also contains a description of how the universe started with the Big Bang, which is now accepted by all physicists, really, majority of physicists, and it was discovered very recently. The Quran also describes how the mountains are constructed. 
The Quran also describes how the formation of clouds happens and the water cycle works. The Quran also describes the universe as expanding. The Quran describes how pain receptors are in the skin. The Quran also describes many, many other things. And yet this book, Bill, is a book which is 1400 years old. Okay, is that isn't that quite amazing? That that would sound like a miracle, yeah. Yeah, miracle. Okay, the Quran has remained unchanged for 1,400 years. It's exactly the same today, and this is not my opinion or the opinion of the Muslims. This is the opinion of atheists, Christians, Jews. Everyone else agrees the Quran has not changed for 1,400 years. Exactly the same book in the Arabic language. Obviously, in translations, people can translate into whatever they wish, whenever. But in the Arabic language, the Quran, which is the Quran, is in Arabic, is exactly the same all over the world. Okay, it's a book that's easy to memorize, and millions of people have memorized the Quran off by heart. So therefore, you can't easily change the Quran. In fact, you can't change the Quran. People who have memorized the Quran would know it straight away. They say, excuse me, that word doesn't should be there. It makes sense. Yep. Okay, and this is memorized by millions of people all over the world. It contains a challenge from God. God says in the Quran, if you th God says in the Quran that if you have doubt. I tell you the exact words in the Quran, translated into English, of course. God says in the Quran, if you have doubt in what we have revealed to our servant, Muhammad, peace be upon him, then produce a surah, a chapter like it, uh, and call your helpers, your witnesses, besides God, if you are truthful. And God says, if you can't do this, you know, if you can't take up the challenge, if you can't do this, and you can never do this, then fear the fire, the fuel of which are going to be human beings and stones prepared for the disbelievers. Now, this is a statement in the Quran. So this challenge is there and this challenge has stood for 1400 years. No one has been able to produce three sentences in the Arabic language which match the eloquence, the language, the style of the, and power of the Arabic and also the scientific statements and plus all these other characteristics. Okay, uh, and now also, if someone wrote that in a book, as you know, as a scientist, if someone wrote in a book of science, this book is so brilliant, no one can write three sentences like it. Okay, I challenge anyone to do this. It's a very arrogant statement to make. It'll be, yes. Very arrogant statement to make. No one can write three sentences like my book. It's an amazingly arrogant statement to make. However, if God says it, that's fine. He knows the future. Yeah. Okay, now, okay. This book uh, contains God's challenges, as I've said. This book was given to a man who could neither read nor write. Prophet Muhammad could not read or write, peace be upon him. That's adding more evidence now. Its words have the effect of changing people's lives forever. The Quran con does not contain a single contradiction, even though it was revealed over 23 years. Okay. God says in the Quran, have they, the non-Muslims, I'm translating English, obviously, from the Quran, Arabic. Have they not considered the Quran? Surely, if it came from other than God, it would contain many. Con they would find in it many contradictions. When you add these up, would you agree the Quran is quite an amazing book? It is quite an amazing book, considering the time it's come from, what it's revealed. Yeah. Yes. Would you say that it's a book that's beyond the human ability to produce? Yeah. So it's a miracle. Yeah. If it's a miracle, that means it's from God. So do you can you accept that the Quran must be from God? Yeah. Okay. And the Quran says that the Prophet Muhammad is from amongst the messengers. God says in the Quran about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Inna ka al -musareen. Certainly you are from amongst the messengers to the Prophet Muhammad. That means he must be a messenger of God. If you've agreed that the Quran is from God, then the Quran says Muhammad is a messenger of God, then you, I would suggest you should accept Muhammad is a messenger of God. Are you prepared to do that? Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Now, if you accept that, uh, then really you're a Muslim. Your beliefs are Muslim beliefs. You believe that there's one God, almighty, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-hearing, and he alone should be worshipped. Bill, would you agree with that? Yep. Okay. Would you agree that uh, the Quran is the words of Almighty God from what I've shown you and from what you've already heard, your own experience? Yeah. yeah. Would you therefore agree that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of Almighty God? That makes sense, yeah. Okay. Then you're a Muslim, my friend. Okay, so you say the words now. In English you say, I bear witness. I bear witness. There is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. There is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad, peace be upon him. That Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is his servant and messenger. Is his servant and messenger. Okay, now you repeat the words in Arabic. Ash. Ash. Hadu. Hadu. An. 
ان لا لا الہ الہ الا اللہ الا اللہ و و اشہد اشہد ان ان محمد محمد عبده عبده و و رسول رسول له له Congratulations, my friend, you're a Muslim. It's a very, very big favor of Allah upon you. It's not your choice or my choice, it's His choice. Because Allah says in the Quran, no one can believe except with His permission. Okay? If Allah favors somebody, He opens their heart to Al-Islam, to submit to Him. Because that's the biggest gift Allah can give you. And that's what He's given you today. So congratulations, my friend, it's a very, very big thing. Don't take it lightly. I'll give you a book on Islam. And a copy of the Quran, and you can meet some Muslims, and uh, uh, and you'll see your life changing, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.